Hi everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the City and Girls course, the Woodwork uh, Year 3 course for City and Girls Carpentry and Joinery and Bench Joinery. So today we're going to be talking about uh, production of drawings. Now in the old days, not very long ago, within my lifetime, all plans for buildings were drawn on very large drawing boards with a rule that went up and down in a parallel motion so you could just do straight lines very very quickly and you could draw the plans for all sorts of building things entirely by hand and using just a pencil okay nowadays although people still can do that and often i've drawn plans for buildings like that um, nowadays people use what's called computer aided design computer aided design cad it's called and uh, computer aided design is obviously a computer program that enables you to draw pictures on your computer and those pictures then are very highly adaptable they can be emailed to somebody you can send them on a text you can send them on a, um, a message system you can take a photograph of the plans and send them there's all sorts of ways that they can be sent and that's the convenience of doing things on a computer um, the drawings can be very high quality and of course when you receive it on a computer you can expand it to look at the very fine detail or you can make it smaller so that you can see the whole drawing in one go. The drawings can easily be manipulated and amended and some programs even enable you to um, change the drawing into a three-dimensional model which means that you can then literally uh, walk through the building and see what it looks like even from outside and all the different sides and this is um, a very very creative uh, way of drawing plans um, you can put different layers on the drawing so you can for example have the initial dimensions then you can have the straight lines and then on top of the straight lines you can put colors for paint on top of them you can put um, items of furniture to make it look like as if it's real so this is the beauty of computer aided designs most um, newly qualified architects or architectural technicians will produce drawings using the CAD or the computer aided design system and for many people now it's become the preferred method of having drawings Gone are the days when people have massive drawings that go through a special printing machine. Okay, We still have to print sometimes, but um, uh, the, the way that drawings are done nowadays is really quite different. Also, the drawings can be archived. You can put, you know, a thousand drawings on just a little mighty drive. Um, and also you can attach them to an email, as I said before, and send them to somebody across the world or even into the next um, house. Um, so these computer-aided design programs... <coughs> Excuse me. Computer-aided design programs are tremendous advantages. Um, the initial outlay for the equipment required is very expensive. You need to have, obviously, a computer. You need to have a very good quality display. You need to have a keyboard. You need to have some software and you need to have what's called a plotter or a printer. However, once you've got those things, it then becomes exceptionally easy, very, very easy indeed, to be able to um, do all the work that you need to do for plans. Now, the next thing that we need to know about is um, that paper comes in all sorts of different sizes and they all have a name. We all know what a normal sheet of paper is that goes into a computer. That's called an A4, A4 size. It's 297 millimetres by 210 millimetres. However, if you have double the size of A4, it then becomes A3. Okay, if you have double the size of that, it becomes a2 and double the size of that becomes a1 and then double the size of that becomes a0 or a0 but there's other sizes as well you can have very small sizes you can go from a4 to a5 to a6 to a7 and to a8 and when you get down to a8 to 
they're little tiny, they're like the size of a photograph. Okay, so these are all the different sizes that are used for all the different types of plans. Now, when a plan is drawn, there are different ways of drawing a plan. And I've actually drawn some on a piece of paper so that you can see the different styles. And the first one I did is this one. Let me see if I can find it. There we are. Now, this one is called orthographic projection. So what you've got is you've got the front elevation, what the house looks like at the front. And then if you'd imagine you're standing here and you look that way, then you can see what it looks like from the side view if you're standing this side of the house. We've also got a plan view. So if you cut off the house and took away the top and you were looking down from above, this is what the building would look like from above. And from above, you would see the walls and see the dimensions of all the building. You'd see the bottom of the stairs going up. You'd see the front door and so on. OK, so this is called orthographic projection. Now, there are other, there are other types. Let's have a look at them, shall we? There's three-dimensional drawing, and with three-dimensional drawing, there's lots of different ways of doing three-dimensional drawing. The first, and the, one of the most common, is called um, isometric projection. Now, isometric projection is exactly the same building, but it's drawn in such a way that this is 30 degrees, and this also is 30 degrees. And so you have this perspective of being able to look slightly down on the building and you can see in three dimensions exactly how it works. Um, the next one we need to look at is called oblique projection. Now oblique projection, initially it looks a little bit similar to what we just had, except for one thing, is that the, the, the front is flat, okay, and only at the side does it go up at 45 degrees? And as it goes up at 45 degrees, it has the real size of the building in its depth. This means that you can take measurements off the front, but you can also take measurements off the side. Sometimes these drawings look a little bit strange because it isn't how we normally look at buildings, but they are very useful to have or, um, oblique projection for being able to measure the depth of things. It's easy to measure the front, but measuring the depth is important too. And then we have another type of drawing, which I've tried to draw for you to help you to see. It's called, okay, it's called perspective drawing, perspective drawing. Now this type of drawing is quite unique because all the lines on a building fall in a straight line and they go to a place that would vanish at a little dot in the distance. See, all of these lines go towards that little dot in the distance. But all the other lines on the other side of the building, they also go off into the distance to a little place where they vanish. If you imagine you had a lot of trees here then the trees would be there and they would go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller off into the distance until you can't see them anymore. Now this is called perspective drawing. It's one of the most realistic ways of being able to show what a building looks like. Now they're all different, aren't they? They're all a slightly different way of drawing, but they're all, in a sense, they all have advantages and disadvantages. Now, <clears throat> when, when we're drawing... OK, there are lots and lots of symbols that are used in the drawing, which enable us to understand what things are without having to have a label on everything. OK, you don't need to have a label on every single thing on the drawing. The first thing is if you see a little double box, a little box within a box, that's a sink. If on a plan you see a large box with another one in the middle, then that's the sink top. That's the metal sink top with the bowl in the middle. If you see a little box which says WB, WB, then it's a washing bowl, okay, or a washing basin, you could say. If you see this here, which is a long oblong thing with a dot in at the one end, that's called a bath. We all know what a bath is, don't we? Um, and if you see something like a square box with a little 
dot at the one corner, that's a shower. So it doesn't need to say on it shower. Everybody recognises and everybody knows what that means. If you see these two little things side by side, you know that that's a WC, it's a toilet. If you see a box like that with an arrow facing up to the top, that means it's a window with, which has hinges at the top. Okay. If you see a gap in a wall and then you see this D shape coming out, then you'll know that that's a door that's opening. It's a door that's opening. Okay. If you see just two lines against a wall, that's going to be a radiator. If you see a circle in the corner of a room, for example, that's going to be a light. So these, this means that when, even though some of the little symbols seem a little bit strange, when you look at a plan, you can immediately figure out what all the different things mean. Now this little thing here is a bit unusual. It's just a circle with a, a stick sticking out of it. That's actually a light switch. Okay, if you see um, a thing that's like a little bulb with a little switch at the top, that's a, that's a socket, an electrical socket. I don't know why it's that shape, but that's the shape that everybody draws them. If you see a plan that has a sort of an arrow in a circle, it doesn't matter which way it's facing, that's indicating which way is north. So you might want to change the plan around so that you can see which way is north. If you see a box with a cross in the middle like that, then that means it's wood, but it's wood that's been sawn, it hasn't been planed. And if you see a block like this with lots of circles and their little dots, that means concrete. Now you see how all these things are so very interesting and significant. Um, coming down here, if you see a double line with cross pieces across it, that's insulation. Okay, if you see a double line, with double lines on it like that, that means that that's brickwork. Okay, if you see something that has these X's going right across it, then that's block work. These are concrete blocks, not bricks. And if you see something that has hatches that go three one way, three the other way, three one way, three the other way, that that means that that is soil, soil like you have in the garden. Now, if you see a long stick like that with with filled in bits okay it's not a measuring stick it means it's the down proof membrane and that's what that means you don't have to say on the plan what it means that's what it always means on a plan if you see double lines but with a, a zigzag going up and down it like that it just means it's hardcore it's it's actually rock that's what it means compacted rock if you see um, a box with some lines on it with an arrow facing one way that means it's a staircase and that staircase has an arrow that goes upwards Let me just raise this a little bit for a moment and and sometimes you'll have drawings where you've got different types of wood if you have lines on the wood that look like this it means that the wood is soft wood but if you have lines on it that are double lines they look similar but they're double lines that means it's a hard wood now, all these symbols are universal. They're used all over the country, and in fact, they're used mainly around the world. Everybody uses a similar way of communicating in this way. So there we are. That's our lesson for today. We look forward to catching up with you on our next episode, and we wish you a great day. Bye for now.